How do you add $10,000 in personal training revenue without adding a single member to your gym? You're going to find out today because Chris Cooper, True Brain Founder, is going to tell you. I'm Mike Warkenton. I am your host. This is Run a Profitable Gym. Chris, are you ready to help gym owners add 10 k in personal training revenue today? Absolutely. More than anything else, I'm just going to remove the barrier that's stopping them from adding it. We're going to tell you exactly how to do that. Before we do, please hit subscribe. We would love to see you every single episode to help you run a better gym. And Chris, I'm going to give you something right here, just a quick story from our last leaderboard show. I talked to a gym owner in Denmark. Name is Rune Larson. He has a gym with huge monthly revenue. He told me his membership fees are, the, are very high in Denmark for Denmark, but in the worldwide scheme, they're not very high. This is for his group classes. He knows that. His personal training rates are about $140 an hour U.S., way higher than the average in the US and he's crushing it in PT. He has lots of members, lots of group members and tons and tons of PT. And I think you can give them this people, listeners, the secret as to how he's doing it. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, especially if you're running a group training gym and especially a CrossFit gym, you're getting, you know, a barrage of messages saying that personal training is not CrossFit. I think that's garbage. I think mm -hmm. that there's always a place for one-on-one. -on -one. And we're going to get into exactly how to do that, why it's important, and how to add it, even if you're running a CrossFit gym that's only ever done group classes. And we're going to do all, all right. that today. Let's dig in. So we're going to talk cool. about this first. We need the simple plan. How are you going to get your group members to do personal training? And the focus here, goal reviews. What are we doing here and how can gym owners do this with their current members? Yeah. So what you want to do is make sure that every member in your gym, no matter what kind of gym you have, has a clear goal, a plan, and somebody to hold them to the plan. And what that means is that you should have asked them when they started, what's your goal so that you could help them identify how to get there. Mm -hmm. But even if you didn't do that, even if they came in on a trial or they just walked straight into group classes, you want to start checking in on them now. And that's because you want to get ahead of the process where they start to like quit your gym. So you set up a goal review. You want to do this every three to six months and you want to sit down with them for about 10 minutes and say, here's your goal. Here's your progress. Here's your next best step. So in practice, this would look like, Mike, you're my client. You come in. Hey, Mike, it's been 90 days since we last chatted. Let's measure your progress. So we get you on the in-body or we do whatever, some kind of measurement. And we're measuring the thing that you care about. So if you don't care about your body composition, we don't do the in-body. If you only care about your max clean, I say, what's your max clean now? We track that stuff. Then I say, are you happy with your progress? Mm -hmm. And if you say yes, I say, congrats, man. I'm so proud of you. I really would love to tell your story to inspire others. I pull out my camera and you give me a 30 second little happy with my progress talk. I get to tell your story. If you say, you know what? I wish I was getting faster results, Chris. Mm -hmm. I say, okay, if I were in your shoes and I really wanted to speed up my progress, here's what I would do. Now, that's where the prescription comes in. And as a coach, I'm not prescribing personal training to everybody, but as a professional, I know, hey, look, Mike, if you had a little bit more one-on-one -on -one attention once a week, I think there's some extra stuff that we could do. Or, hey, Mike, I think that if I wrote you a supplemental program to incorporate more zone two, give you some metabolic flexibility, help you burn more fat when you're exercising, I think your progress would come a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. Are those interesting to you? Yes, they yeah. are. Here's the price. And that's all it is. You're basically um, being a professional and coaching people to the best possible answer for them. The highest level athletes in the world have one-on-one -on -one coaching. They have a specific nutrition coach. They have a specific coach for the bobsled or the bike or even for CrossFit. You know, they, they don't shy away from it. And the more elite an athlete becomes, the more they need that one-on-one. -on -one. At the other end of the spectrum, there are people who are coming into your gym who want to do your CrossFit or your HIT or your boot camp or your kettlebell class. They don't really want to try it out in front of strangers in a group setting. So they might want one-on-one. -on -one. And we're going, to, we're going to come to exactly what to say to those people later. This is the prescriptive model. Chris blitzed through it and gave you the details of it. I'm going to put a link in the show notes so that you can read exactly how this prescriptive model works, take notes, and then implement this at your gym. But the short version is you ask clients what they want to accomplish. You tell them how you can make it happen. And that kind of seals the deal. It's the uh, help first concept that if you see in the book behind me that Chris wrote about, I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. The idea here, you're helping clients get what they want 
and you should be compensated for that. So that's the simple stuff. You could do this with your current clients, Chris, right? Like you, we said at the yeah. beginning, you don't have to get, get new clients. You obviously can acquire new clients, but this works. Have you seen this in practice and in the mentorship or uh, the gyms that you mentor? Have you seen this work really well when people do this with their current clients? Yeah. I mean, it saved my gym. I, I was running this personal training studio and we'll get into that story later. Mm -hmm. And basically the money from personal training was paying for the CrossFit gym. And mm -hmm. I didn't realize like the two should work together and that there's like a, a, a happy middle. Um, but right now, like the reason that a lot of gym owners don't offer this to their clients is between their ears. Maybe they think like, oh, I couldn't afford this, so they don't want it. Or maybe they think like, well, they should be in the group. That's what's best for them. But what you have to do is just pause for a second and say, in a perfect world where money was not an object, time was not an object, scheduling was not an object, would this person get faster results one-on-one? -on -one? And if the answer is yes, then it is your duty to tell them that as their coach. And I love, I love the idea of hybrid memberships because it's almost that drop down. Like if you said to someone, Hey, I, the best results are going to be 15 personal training sessions, one-on-one -on -one with me a month the price is $900. People are like, Oh, not everyone can afford that. That's cool. Yep. What if you said to a group training member, you're paying $160 a month, but if you add in $175 PT session a month, I can give you an hour of focus time. That's going to supercharge everything else that you do. Are you interested in that? And a lot of people will say yes, and we've seen this in our gym, uh, the mentorship clients, that changes their average revenue per member from like 160 to like 225 or whatever it is. And that's like life-changing revenue and profit for these people. So that hybrid drop-down me membership is a great option. Have you seen that work in our gyms as well? Yeah, many, many. Some uh, now offer it as the only option. When you sign up at their gym, there's a group training option and one-on-one, -on -one and, mm -hmm. and you have to uh, have one-on-one. -on -one if you're signing up for a group training option, you know, the way that we frame it at my gym is basically like, we want you to get to your goal as fast as possible. The fastest possible way is like the direct and focused attention of a coach one-on-one. -on -one. The, um, the, the budget option is to do it in a group class, which will still get mm -hmm. you there. We have our CrossFit groups are extremely effective. You're just not going to get there quite as fast. But that's, what, you know, if that's what you prefer, no problem. In our gyms, though, like what we typically see with two brain gyms is that when they come in, if they're not offering a one on one option, this usually bumps their revenue up like 15 to 20 percent right away. And so one of the very first things that we teach is how to add that one on one option. And the, the thing that they would say is their favorite. Yes, their revenue is going up. Their ARM is going up. Their bottom line is improving. But what they would say is their favorite is this is a massive opportunity for my coaches to make mm -hmm. more money. You know, yeah, and, and, and honestly, like a, a guy that just applied to my gym, no word of a lie. This guy is from Brazil. He's been working at different gyms in the city, trying to stay in Canada. And he applied to my gym because he said, I follow two brain. And I know that I can make a better living at a two brain gym than anywhere else. And I can back that up with, I've talked to a number of gym owners and there was a thread in our private group uh, going on the other day, talking about top mm. paid staff members at, uh, at gyms. And the numbers are like 80,000, 90,000, hundred thousand dollars. And this is like, personal trainers used to make like 25 or 30. And you're, you know, that was the reality about 10 or 15 years ago. It was like the career did not exist because at some point 30 grand doesn't cut it and you're out to be a real estate agent or whatever that's changing now. And so this model is really helping trainers make a ton more money and it really helps gyms make a ton more money and it helps clients make much faster progress. Not every client is going to sign up for this. If someone's looking for a $10 a month access only gym membership, that is not your client avatar for this model. But for other people who want results in coaching, in the coaching in a micro gym setting, this works really well. Our data and leaderboards always show that. So please follow along. We release those every single month. And Chris tells you what the top 10 gyms are, top 10 gyms are doing. And we release their quotes, exactly what they are doing at their gyms. Chris, talk the, to me about scale. Oh yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Mike, there's one more thing here. Yeah, yeah. And the key is really always, what do your clients want? Mm -hmm. And knowing you know, how to, how to provide that. And what you'll find is that when you start asking the question that I'm going to share with you in a couple of moments, you'll find that 10 to 15% of the people who walk through your door are attracted to your method. They want to do your kettlebell, your bar, your Pilates, your CrossFit. They don't want to do it in a group. And if you don't offer a one-on-one -on -one option for them, you're basically excluding them. Mm -hmm. There you go. Now, this is an interesting one. At the original CrossFit gym in Santa Cruz, California, Greg Glassman started training people one-on-one -on -one 
And then he started training them in very small groups. And mm -hmm. then he scaled to larger groups and that became a worldwide empire with thousands and thousands of gyms around the world. But the interesting part about that is that people often think scaling PT now goes from personal training one-on-one, -on -one, giant groups with tons of people and lots of revenue, but there's a missing step and nobody saw it for a very long time. What is it? It's small group training as we define it now or semi-private, you might Which call Greg it. Which Greg did. Which Greg did. No, you know, when for, Greg no, was talking about group training, just for context, his groups were like four to six, not 30. And you can hear him talking about this in the early articles on the journal. Along the way, CrossFit gyms got this idea that CrossFit equals group training. And that was never Greg's model. Um, and of course, you know, that, that model is great for CrossFit HQ because it means more affiliates, more level one certifications. It's great for the people on the L1 staff because they get to do more L1 gigs. It's not the best model for CrossFit gyms. And it, and this applies to strength and conditioning gyms. And um, I think, you know, I'll share my story of how that almost bankrupted me by thinking that the big group model was like the CrossFit model. Yeah, and it, I was in the same boat and I did not realize that you could each CrossFit in a, a, group, a one on one yeah. setting. And that's just like the hundreds of thousands of dollars I left on the table over the last, you know, 15 years is, is, is real. So tell me, what is the, yeah. how do we scale? What do we do? So if I was doing it again, so Chris Cooper, 2008, I've got a personal training studio. We're doing everything one on one. Mm -hmm. I decide I can't keep doing a 13 hour day anymore where I'm doing one on one after, you know, session after session, selling my time. How do I scale? We find CrossFit, the pictures on the website at that time were fairly big groups, you know, maybe 11 or 12, it looked like. And so I opened up a CrossFit gym and I thought, this is how I scale. I, I go from one-on-one -on -one to group. We tried it out with a group of 12. It was fun as hell to coach. Mm -hmm. I had the time of my life. It was so great. I turned to Mike Watson and said, this is all I want to do for the rest of my life. And he was like, this is amazing. And not even a year later, that CrossFit gym had almost bankrupted me. I, the only thing that was keeping our business alive and food on my table was the personal training studio, which I just, I had two leases. And what I realized was that people in the personal training studio were still doing CrossFit. I was doing the same workouts with them mm -hmm. as I was doing in the group classes. And then I'd go up to the CrossFit gym at night and coach two or three people <laughs> in this class, you know, or even class. eight or nine, and I still was losing money. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. a class. And, and I'm like, what is going on here? And that's when yeah. I learned that there's a difference between the method of CrossFit and the model of group training. Mm -hmm. And they're not necessarily the same thing. So had I known this back then, what I would have done and what Greg was doing, but I didn't see it. No and I don't did. think anybody was asking him these questions, was partnering people up. And what he told me later... And you can listen to this interview. You can hear him say it in his own words. If you go to tbrainbusiness.com forward slash Greg, what he actually did was he would say, Mike, you're my client. You're, you're doing great. You're making all this progress. In fact, the only way that I could think to have you make progress a little bit faster is to have you work out with a training partner. Now I've got Sam over here who has the same goals as you. He's not quite as fit, but I think if the two of you worked out together that you would both make results more quickly. Do you want to try it? We'll do a session. If you hate it, we'll go back to one-on-one. -on -one. What have I got and, to lose? Yeah. I mean, it's a reasonable expectation, right? He didn't say this is going to cost you less or anything like that. Not right away. And so they tried it and they loved it. And, you know, you became friends with Sam and Sam became friends with you. And suddenly it's like, you've got this accountability partner, you've got mm -hmm. somebody to race. And Greg was doing this with like the world jujitsu champion, I think Garth. And he had like a, a really high level cyclist. And he started writing about the compounding effect of people training together. And then eventually it became three and then four. And then at, at the time when he had four people training together, he had to move out of that facility and find his own place in whatever it was called research park or something. And that's basically what group training was, was okay. Well, these four people, they come in and basically do personal training together. Now there are some gym owners who are super duper smart. They saw this, they figured it out. Daniel Purington, Brian bought, and they started doing semi-private or small group training. I didn't. And I tried to jump from one-on-one -on -one to big group. It killed me because I was charging big group prices, right? Eight, 10 bucks per visit for personal training. I was only getting two, three people in these classes. So now my revenue for that class is 24 bucks. <laughs> that doesn't even cover the lights, you know? Yeah, and your hourly rate was probably like 60 or whatever it was. 
for personal training it was yeah i mean it it was crazy like i could do three hours of personal training and go home or i could work for nine hours a day in the crossfit gym across town and and make the same revenue with higher expenses so Mm -hmm. um yeah if i had it to do over again i would scale exactly as greg did i mean he was brilliant about that he just didn't share it with everybody so partner people up look for complementary pairs it's not always going to work out but most of the time it will and scale up that way. And, and there is a little bit of a discount that goes on, you know? Uh, so in, in, in my gym, um, if you're training one-on-one, it's a certain price point, you know, 75 bucks an hour. If you're training two-on-one, the price actually drops down to like 67 an hour or something like that. So you're saving about 10%, but you're gaining like way more value it's 50 percent better to train with a partner and what's really interesting there is that after we started implementing semi-private training this is all my coaches want to do now because they've mm-hmm. gone from okay i can earn 32 dollars an hour to now i can earn 80. and so when a new client comes in they want them in semi-private um so this is you know it's kind of the middle ground between personal training and like the big group training that we were offering but it's the fastest growing segment of my business right now and a lot mm-hmm. of two brain gyms are going in this direction and with semi-private training, these clients don't have to do the same workouts that are modified mm. for this person and that person, right? Like no. they can literally do their own programming streams where I think you told me you go in and do deadlifts and Sally over there is doing whatever it is for her goals. And you're still having that same atmosphere. You're still high-fiving. You're still, you know, sh- shooting the uh, crap between uh, sets and so forth. Your coach is motivating you. You're getting high fives and cheers. That whole atmosphere is there, but you're working on what you want to work on. She's working on what she wants to work on. And the coach is giving you about 80% of the personal training attention you would get one-on-one, yeah. same thing with her. Everybody's getting a price break, the coaches are making more, the business is making more. It kind of sounds like a perfect model, does it not? Yeah, man, I mean, I, so I'm a fan as an owner because it's higher revenue, higher margin, better service for the clients, but I'm yeah. a fan as a client too. So I have a program that comes from my cycling coach. I go over there at 11 o'clock today, so 90 minutes from now, there'll be four of us in my group one is coming back after a prolonged bout her husband unfortunately passed away from alzheimer's one uh just had a baby and she's getting back into it one has like five kids and she needs the schedule right so um i know them they know me i don't have to talk about the weather with the coach because she is carrying on four conversations at a time my coach i I have cleans and deadlifts today my coach is like the canadian national champion for weightlifting for like age group I'm going to get amazing coaching out of her. So is everybody. There's a little bit of small talk in between like, Hey, Lauren, what did your kids do this Mm -hmm. weekend? You know, but it's my favorite now. Like I like it better than one-on-one as a client even. And I know the coach loves it too, because she's getting paid double what she normally would. I hate it as a trainer and I would have hated it as a client doing a 500 meter warm up row with someone counting my meters. Oh, yeah. A coach like, okay, you're almost there. We're almost ready to do some dynamic stretching. I'm like, just leave me alone. I'll finish the row and we'll get back when I need some coaching on muscle ups. Right. So that I get what you're saying. There are some major benefits because sometimes you don't want to hover over someone the no. entire time as a trainer. And sometimes an athlete doesn't want that either. But anyway, so this yeah, is a quick, it can be distracting. Quick progression, right? It's a great progression that no one saw, right? Or very few people saw. And then a few of gym owners put it together. And now we have this really cool program that serves so well in between one-on-one and group. So we said at the beginning of the show, $10,000 in revenue without adding any members. We've talked about exactly how you can do that with these goal review sessions. You're meeting with your clients, you're giving them these options, and you're getting some to sign up for personal training. So Chris, I want you to tell me, this is the big money thing right here with the $10,000. Mm, yeah. And how we're going to do two topics. Second, we're going to go with new clients or prospective clients. How do you get them to sign up for personal training? But first, because we said without adding a member, what do you say exactly word for word to get these people in goal review sessions to sign up for personal training? Yeah. So if I imagine myself in the chair at the desk, you're sitting in front of me, you're my client yep. and um, we look at your in-body results or, or I look at your performance results. You know, Maybe you came in and you said, I want to bring my deadlift up to 400 or maybe you came in and you said, I want to drop 10 pounds. The first thing is we're going to measure, You know, how are you doing? So I might pull up Wattify or mm-hmm. push press or be on the whiteboard. I might look at your previous results on the deadlift. I might put you on the in-body. So that's our baseline. We're framing the conversation and I'm going to say, okay, Mike, you're making some progress. You know, you're down 3% body fat. You're, um, 
total weight is down 3.5 pounds. Are you completely satisfied with your progress? And if you say, oh boy, I'd really like to speed it up. I'd say, great. In your shoes, I would want to speed it up too. The best way for you to speed up your progress is to add a one-on-one session with me every month where I will give you a little bit of extra homework. That is the line, gym owners. You should definitely write that down and you can repeat it word for word and you don't even have to give Chris credit. You can take that one for free. How does that conversation, Chris, when you've had this conversation, because I know you've done it recently. Uh, Hundreds of times, yeah. So what happens? What's the response? One of two things. They'll say, okay, how much does that cost? And I'll say, it's an extra 70. I can just add it to your membership and we can start next Monday. And they'll say like, sounds great, I'm in. Sometimes they'll say, "I'm gonna great, I'll try it for three months. Wonderful, let's go. Because I know it's gonna get them better results. Mm -hmm. The other option is they say, okay, how much is it? And I say, it's another 70 on your membership. And they say, I can't afford it. And I say, no problem. Keep doing what you're doing. You're going to get there. We'll meet again in 90 days and measure your progress again. That's it. And I have talked to gym owners on our leaderboard that when they do that and the one gym owner was very clever about this he started doing this stuff with newer clients core review sessions with new clients because it's harder to change behavior with existing clients so he started with new clients and then when all of his old clients are like ah go reviews i don't need them when they started seeing the results that the new clients were getting they were all like banging on his door and saying hey can I do a goal review session? He said, yes, you can. And he sold them more stuff that they wanted and saw value in, and he made way more money. Like it happens like that. So tell, well, yeah, that's a great the, way to segue. Oh, go, go ahead. The, no, the actual numbers, I'm just looking at our averages now. Mm-hmm. Across Two Brain, about 30% of people who do goal reviews wind up upgrading their service to increase the speed of results. And they upgrade by about 30%. So all told, what that means is that if you do a goal review process on your gym, you can increase your revenue by about 9% up like top line, which is, it would be very hard for me to find another way to increase your top line revenue by 9% without adding any more members. If you try right now, set a goal, gym owners, 10 goal review sessions with current clients, do that in the next week, push yourself to do it. About three of them on average should sign up for additional stuff and they might sign up for about 30% more stuff. Try that, yep. track it. If you're struggling with it, and your numbers aren't good, you're doing something wrong, repeat the exact line that Chris said, yep. and then start tracking it and keep going. But this has been proven to work. This is not stuff Chris is making up. This is data from hundreds and hundreds of gyms around the world who are using this process. Now, this is the other one, new clients. What would you say to a new client to present personal training? Because I had no idea how to do this. I run group classes. What do you say? I think this is, I came up with this because I'm an introvert, I think. But Mm -hmm. so basically we go through our NSI process, which we teach in the mentorship program. It's just, you're just asking questions. You never, ever feel like a salesperson because I would never have wanted to. And so you, you ask them their goals, you measure their starting point, you make your prescription and your prescription might be three workouts a week. It might be four or whatever. And then you say, would you be more comfortable doing those workouts in a small group setting or one-on-one with me? There it is. Yeah. John Franklin claims that made that line made him a million dollars. And it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's a line, like a pickup line. It's just being curious and asking, would you be more comfortable doing this in a small group setting or would you be more comfortable doing it one-on-one with me? And in our gym, about 25 to 30% now would say, I'm more comfortable doing it one-on-one with you. Um, in fact, we don't even present the group option a lot of the time. It's always private or semi-private, but historically over the last 20 years of owning this gym, about 30% of people would say, I'm more comfortable doing it one-on-one with you. And what's interesting is that you, you stay one-on-one with them for the first 90 days. And then you ask them that question again and you say, um, we're making amazing progress here. Would you like to try group or would you like to continue one-on-one with me? And about 30% of those people will say, I want to continue with you forever one-on-one. And that's why historically about 10% of our clients were always personal training clients, but the value, like the, what they paid were two and a half times the average group client per month. If you start using this line with new clients, prospective clients in onboarding or sorry, in no sweat intros or free consultations, some of them are going to want personal training and you are going to make more money. We've seen this yeah. happen. John Franklin, million dollars. That's probably a low estimate for some gyms. Other gyms, different numbers. But the idea is if, you know, I'll give you my story. 
you know, like one second. I just said, okay, group classes start Monday at 9 a.m. And they signed up and that was great, <laughs> but it was $150 a month, right? Yeah. If I had said, do you want to do this one-on-one -on -one with me or in a group? Someone said one-on-one, -on -one, that got all of a sudden, that's like a $700 monthly package or something like that, which would have changed my life at the time and changed my whole trajectory as a gym owner. So remember that line, guys. Chris, you've done even better. You have a new guide coming out and it is coming out tomorrow. How to add Ten thousand dollars in PT revenue without adding a single client. How can people get it? Where do they go? What do they do? They go to gymownersunited.com, and you'll see a post there where I'm offering the guide for free. And then you just send me a DM on Facebook to get it. Um, DM on Facebook because Facebook limits the number of friends that I can have. I, I'm always bumping up against that five thousand thousand person cap. That's that's not as my kids would call it a flex. That's just the reality of the algorithm, right? It's so it's best if you send me a DM and then I can give you the, um, the PDF guide and you can just use it and go make more money, you know? And in fact, like, I know a lot of people get these guides, they love them. They're beautiful. They're, they're like collectors of them, but I want you to go try this stuff. I'll tell you this, like people who come into our mentorship program, sometimes they don't want to add personal training. They just believe like, no, I'm, I sell, CrossFit, I sell spin, I sell whatever group training program there is. I don't want to add personal training like Fit Body Bootcamp, F45. Mm -hmm. This is really common. And we say, just be curious enough to ask the client. Mm -hmm. And every single time, 10 times out of 10, they say, hey, I asked the client if they'd be more comfortable doing this one on one. And yeah, you were right. Three out of 10 said yes. And they suddenly realized that they've been shoving 30% of their audience away, people who wanted to sign up but didn't want to try it or like barf in front of a group like mm -hmm. we all did with CrossFit, right? Right. Um, so, yeah. That's where you're going to get that guide. And if you want to go even further, Two Brain clients actually get all these resources and more with yeah. plug and play like scripts, role playing with a mentor, practicing, coaching, standard operating procedures, marketing materials, the whole deal. It's all just pushed in front of you and your mentor will say, use this now, use this now, use this now, and use this next. It's step-by-step -step coaching. And the mentor will also come back and say, did you do that thing? Did you say that line that Chris said in your last no sweat intro or free consultation? Goal, plan, accountability to hold you to the plan. That's where the clients can go even further. So if you want to add speed, mentorship is the answer there. Chris, are you ready tomorrow morning for a flood of DMs in the Gym Owners United group? I sure am. Yeah. I get tied to my phone uh, every third Tuesday when we do this, but I love it because it feels I, my favorite thing in the world is giving people presents and I get to feel like we're giving people presents. Just remember that, you know, just as a lot of your clients will want one-on-one -on -one because they're buying speed, getting business coaching is the same thing. When you buy business coaching, you're buying speed. And the more individualized that attention is, the faster you're going to go. And that's why Two Brain is a one-on-one -on -one mentorship practice. You want to talk about that? There's a link in the show notes, book a call, and you can find out exactly how we can help you. Chris, thanks for your time. I'll let you get ready for uh, DM City tomorrow morning. Get her done. This is Run a Profitable Gym. I'm your host, Mike Warkin, and please hit subscribe on the way out, but don't forget to get that guide tomorrow morning.